Let's make another fun scrapbooking page. So this is my new planner. I have a video of how I made this paper bag cover and the whole journal. You can find that linked below. This image here is from my latest kit called Scrapbooking Papers. And last Sunday, we made this fun scrapbooking page using a photograph of my grandmother. And I asked you in that video whether you would like to see me make another scrapbooking page with this image, which is, which is also my grandmother. And surprisingly, you do. <laughs> so let's have some fun with this image. I cannot give you my grandmother, but I can definitely supply you with some other vintage images if you don't have any of your own to use. So please check the links below this video. So as a background, I'm going to use this, which is the second half of this paper here, which is one of the plain backgrounds from my scrapbooking paper kit. So let's start off with adhering that to my page. So then I have these frames. If you've seen last week's snacks video, then you will know that this is a freebie. So you can find that freebie linked below this video as well. And I want to use this biggest frame here because the image of my grandma is so large. And I'm contemplating not even cutting this out here just kind of leaving it. No, let's cut it off. So she goes in like this. So I'll cut her here. Sorry, grandma. And to come up with ideas of what I could add here, I'm looking at my scrapbooking paper kit. So these are printouts in half the size of the original pages, but I think it's good enough to see what kind of elements we could add. So for example, I really like these like paper flowers. I could add something like this. There's lace here. There are documents and vintage papers in the background. Here we have one of the frames hanging from something. So we could try to do something like that here. There is a key. There's florals, there's a doily, there's a doily here as well. We could add a word. On this one, I also like the idea of having a twig here with a bow. That's also cute. But most importantly, we have lots of bright colors. So that's something I want to add to this spread as well. I printed out these vintage documents, which I will also link for you below. I also have the originals of these and I printed these out, printing four images on one page. And that's how I got them to be this small. And what I really love about using some of these documents for this page is that my grandmother was born 1915. She's 10 years old here. So, so that would be 1925. And these documents, this one, for example, is a German invoice and the date is July 1915. So that's exactly her birth year. So that's definitely something I want to add in the background. And this is a bond and it's from 1920. So she would have been five years old. Not sure if I'm going to use these two, which are also bonds. But let's see if we could add these in the background. I do like the purple here a lot as well. Definitely want the 1915 showing somehow. Maybe like that. Another thing you can see in my digitals is that a lot of the images have butterfly wings. They are a very small detail, which is very easy to miss here as well. Here again and here. So that's something I want to add to my grandma as well. And I chose these yellow ones. 
because I think they go well with this page here. So I wanted to pick up the yellow from this page and add it to this one. And if you are in need of butterfly wings, you can find these linked below as well. Not exactly these, but butterfly images. Something like that. And I have some key charms here. So let's try some of those out. This one is super flat, which is of course great within a journal. I'm not sure which side actually. Yeah, it needs to go here. Okay, not 100% happy with that. Let's try some of these smaller ones, which are definitely more bulky. Nope. Oh, that one could be cute. But I would like to make that pop a little bit. So I want to add some gilding wax. I have this one from Craft Emotions in Metallic Turquoise. What a yummy color. And I'm using my finger glove here. And this of course hardens when it dries. While that dries, I want to continue and I want to make some of these that I have here. So I have this Sizzix Tim Holtz Thin Lits set with the number 661806. I will link this for you below this video as well. And I want them to be like a really strong purple. So I'm going to dye the paper with this Villainous Potion Distress Oxide Spray. This is super, super highly pigmented. Not adding any water. It's dry and somehow it looks very matte, which usually is fine. In ca on camera, actually, it looks a lot more juicy than it is in real. In real, it has like this kind of gray shimmer, but I'm assuming that's because it's an oxide and it oxidizes. So what I want to do is add some varnish on it, which is something I very, very rarely do because usually I want everything to be matte, but this is one of the rare occasions haven't used this in forever. It's not coming out. Okay, now it should work. It is super thick. I could have just also done this probably with a glossy gel medium or something like that, but I wanted to try this one here. I also like doing this because I want to seal in the color. I don't want that coming off on my other page. So this is supposed to give a glass effect and it says it has a drying time of <laughs> 3 to 24 hours depending on how thick you apply it. Maybe that wasn't the smartest idea for a quick video. <laughs> so I have no idea how this is going to react with my heat gun, but that's what I'm going to try. Ha, ah, it's dry. That only took like a minute. Thank goodness for heat guns. Now the oxide won't come off and it's nice and shiny. Yes, you can see my brush strokes, but that's totally fine. That just adds a little bit of texture. And I also have this piece of really bright yellow cardstock. So I want to cut some in this color as well. I guess the varnish made them sticky. So now they're all sticking to the dyes, but that's okay. Oh, they look really cute when they're so shiny. Okay, so let me take all of these out. So I have all my shapes. I love the color combination, but seeing this now, I think it needs another stronger pop of color here. So I'm going to use my Reflex Rose Acrylic Ink by Amsterdam. I know this is very extreme. It's a neon pink, but I really think that this page needs that. 
Another great option would be this Reflex Orange. Both of these are super strong and fun colors. And both go really well here. Let's see, what does this page have? This one has neither, actually. <laughs> it has a light pink and it has a little bit of orange there. I think I'm gonna go with the orange. I'll add some here. But actually, before I use that, I need to glue these down. I actually don't want to glue this down yet because I still want to add something to hang the frame with. But I want the drops on there before I add the flowers. So what I need to do is to glue these two down to start off with. Actually, to start off with, maybe I should glue the wings onto my grandmother. It is such a weird feeling to deal with my grandmother when she was... 10 years old. <laughs> These kind of projects are of course very much inspired by the work by the Keeper of Memories workshop that I took with Alex Castro Ferreira because she inspired me to actually use family photos which I never thought I would do because it seemed too personal but now I don't know how she did it but now I'm really really enjoying having this context okay then I'll also glue her onto the frame And then I can glue these two on. Yep. And I'm still not inking up the edges. I know it's it's really weird. Usually I would always do that. So let's figure out the hanging of the frame first. So I have this twine which is coffee dyed. Can I just tie it around the frame? I just loop it around and then I could glue these two down like that. I'm not happy with this so let me try a different kind of twine. How about this happy one? Yeah, I like that better. That's a lot happier. So how about I just tie a knot on top of the frame so that this doesn't move. Okay, so I'll glue everything down now. Then I can cut off these. Okay, now I'm ready to add the orange ink. Let's cover up her face. Hopefully this time I won't get any on her face like I did here, but actually that's totally fine. I think this needs a little bit of water. Oh yes, it totally needed these. Oh, these make me smile. <laughs> yes. Actually, I'm going to splatter some on this side as well to connect these two a little bit more. There. So now let's play around with the paper flowers a bit to see if we like them at all. I think starting with the bigger flowers on the bottom and then moving up with the smaller flowers. No, that's a lot. They look very dark. They look darker in the video than they do in real. Let's try the yellow ones. This wouldn't be so bad. Can we add maybe a few of the smaller ones of these? Mm-hmm, I think that works better. 
yeah that's it so i can go ahead and glue those down as well and we also still have this key i'm not sure i'm liking that no not loving this but i found something else i found these dried flowers that i had picked on a walk and this purple i think goes really well with this purple and this right here this one is a bit lighter but we can try both options so that's one option or what if we put it up there hmm no, I think it would go here, or the other option is this one. Also cute, that color actually goes really well with the light purple here. I like this one better. I'll attach that with my Liquitex matte gel. And the reason for that is because if I would just add the glue here, I think it would break with time. So I want to make sure that everything is really adhered well and covered in the matte gel as well. So that way, hopefully, everything will stay intact over the years. And the cool thing about this matte gel is that you won't see any of it once it's dry. So I don't have to worry about how far out I go with the gel. So here you see, once the gel is dry, you cannot see it at all. And to connect these two pages even more, I'm going to add a small blue butterfly here, which is the same one as this one, but just printed out smaller. And then I also feel the urge to add some white splatters to this one, maybe even also to this one. So let's cover her up again. Let's cover her up too. It's so funny, they are one and the same person. <laughs> and I'm using my thinned down white gesso. It's so interesting for me to see these two photos in this very playful and whimsical style. I loved my grandmother, but she was pretty strict. And seeing her in this way as a child makes me love her more because I see her in, in this playful way. You know what I mean? I mean, I'm sure she was a fun child. Obviously, I never knew her <laughs> as a child. This kind of helps me change my relationship to my grandmother. It's hard to explain. I don't know if you understand what I mean. But this is having a very interesting effect on me. So maybe something you want to try if you have photos of your relatives. Maybe it will make you see them in a different light as well. This was a super surprising outcome of this spread. Had fun with it. Get your frames freebie if you haven't already. It's linked below. Love you guys. Mwah, mwah.